Hello and welcome to our recorded church service for Easter in April 2021, coming from inside Liberton Kirk. And this service is mainly aimed at our care home residents in the parish, as well as any staff who have the chance to watch. If you're not in one of those categories, you're just as welcome to listen in. Uh, we're not allowed to come in to be with you in the care home at the moment. So we've recorded this short service of worship for you that you can watch at your convenience whenever it suits you. And we hope that you will be blessed by it. My name is Fiona Devoy and I'm a lay preacher in the Church of Scotland. You might remember me from previous visits in the flesh or previous recordings. Today, our music is recorded from the internet and I hope that you'll be able to join in if you would like to. Since spring is here, we're going to start with a lovely him based on the words of St. Francis of Assisi, who loved nature so much, and it's all creatures of our God and King. Let us approach the Lord in prayer. Gracious and loving Father, in this season of Easter, we thank you for the cross. 
Without the cross, we would have no hope of salvation. Without the cross, we would have no future. But with Jesus' sacrifice on the cross for us, we too have the sure hope of resurrection, of new birth, and of transformation. Lord, forgive us that so often we forget this good news and live as if Easter does not matter. Because Jesus died and rose again, we are forgiven our faults and our imperfections and can rise to new life with him. And we stand amazed in your presence, knowing that we are loved and forgiven. So we come to offer ourselves and all we have to you once again. Be with us in this short time of worship today. Amen. And before we have our reading, we're going to sing again, and it's a great Easter hymn. There is a green hill far away without a city wall where the dear Lord was crucified. He died to save us all. Our reading today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 28. And it, it is, of course, very appropriately for Easter, the resurrection of Jesus. So listen to the word of God. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for he has been raised as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, greetings. And they came to him and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. In our worship this month, we're remembering and celebrating the first Easter 2,000 years ago when our Lord Jesus Christ rose from the dead for our salvation. 
And the resurrection is at the heart of our faith. So it's maybe surprising, but the symbol that Christians use to represent Christianity is the cross on which Jesus was crucified and in which he died. We're used to seeing crosses in churches and on flags like the salt tire and the red cross in ambulances. And in Scotland, we also see it in the Celtic crosses in cemeteries or at the side of the road. But when we think about it, it's a bit strange that we use the cross to hang in our churches and homes and often to wear as jewellery to show what we believe. Because when you think about it, why the cross? It was a horrible way to execute people used by the Romans and other conquerors against their enemies. Maybe one reason was that the cross is a very simple symbol to make, especially if you don't have much, just two pieces of wood tied together with a bit of string. Or you can make one out of a palm leaf, like this one I have in my hand from Palm Sunday, woven into a cross shape. When we're learning to write as children, the cross is one of the earliest letters of the alphabet that children draw after a circle. And we use that cross in writing for lots of things, for voting or in our multiplication tables or in games of crosses, for example. And there are three things I thought of today that might help us to remember what the cross is all about. Three memory aids that might be helpful to us. And the first, you need to think back to your school days when the teacher used to take her red pen and mark a cross against any mistakes that we made in our spelling or in our sums. And the cross of Jesus is a bit like that because it cancels out any mistakes that we have made and wrongs that we have done in our lives, offering us forgiveness and a new start. The cross takes away our sins. Or we might think of the crosses that we write after our names when we're signing a card or a letter. A whole row of crosses represents uh, kisses that we want to send to someone. And the cross shows us that God loves us and that Jesus has arms wide enough to love the whole world. He loves us with such a strong love that he came to die for us. And my third memory aid comes from the world of pirates and treasure. Just like the cross on a treasure map, it shows us where our treasure lies. Jesus is our treasure. Not treasure like gold or silver or, or doubloons, but something much more valuable than that. The Bible tells us that God loved the world so much that he gave us the gift of his only son, Jesus, so that everyone who believes in him will have everlasting life. Jesus and the hope that he brings us in the resurrection is worth more than all the money in the world. So this cross, which was about an act of hatred and cruelty, has become something good and pure and life-giving through the power of God and his gift to us of Jesus. And that is the great message of Easter now and always. Jesus is risen. Alleluia. Amen. And we're now going to sing one of the great Easter hymns, Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia. <laughs>
now going to turn to the Lord with our prayers for the world, for others and for ourselves. So let us pray. God, our Father, you made our world and everything in it. Out of your goodness, you provide us with what we need in our everyday lives. And we thank you for this. And you told us to ask for what we need. So we bring you now our prayers for the world. Lord, we remember all those who govern our country today. We pray for all our political leaders who have so much responsibility over other people's lives. Give them the wisdom to look out for the needs of all those they serve, especially the poor and the vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Prince of Peace, teach us all to live in peace with those around us. We pray especially for the victims of war and violence and crime and ask for your help for them and for all those who work for peace and justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Jesus came into the world so that we could have hope. We pray for all those who are despairing and without hope, those who are poor or homeless or isolated and lonely, and all who are anxious about the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, Lord, we pray for our own needs. We pray for those who are known to us, who are sick at home or in hospital. We ask for your blessing on our families and all who care for us, especially the staff in our care homes who look after us so well. And we remember those whom we have loved, who have passed on and are now worshipping with you in glory. Grant us your peace and your hope for the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let's say together the Lord's Prayer using whichever version we are most comfortable with. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. And we close our worship today with that great triumphal hymn, Thine be the glory, risen conquering son.
As we come to the end of our worship service today, let's bow our heads and ask for God's blessing. Let us go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. And as we go, may God the Father make us holy in his love. May God the Son enrich us with his grace. May God the Holy Spirit strengthen us with joy. And may the Lord bless us and keep us now and always in eternal life. Amen. And thank you very much for worshipping with us today.